I'm Lawrence Traverso. I'm a songwriter and producer, and today we'll be working at the Strong Room in London, part of the Air Group. And in this, the first of the Frontline Producer series, we're going to be looking at how to put together a track based on a brief sent to me by a label or management. We've got just 48 hours to turn around a handful of sample CDs and a few ideas into a track that the label are going to want to run with, and eventually pay your bills. So here we are, this is Strong Room, uh, Studio One. We've got our beautiful Neve desk, a pair of NS10s and some 1031s behind us. Uh, the DAW we're using today is Pro Tools uh, 7.4. We'll be using 8 tomorrow in our smaller studio. And um, we'll be looking at a brief today that we got in for a, 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 lovely, a lovely pop singer. Uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward, but it's going to take us from the beginning to the end and getting it into the right hands. There's going to be some mic placement for some guitars. Uh, we'll be looking at acoustics and possibly even electrics if we've got time. It's about setting up, getting the best mix, and really just enjoying the, uh, the work as you're getting through it. We've got a brief here, um, slightly more information than usual. Uh, what have we got? New pop dance girl group signed with management and deal looking for songs. Uh, they've even pushed us in a general direction looking for pop dance songs in the vein of Britney Spears, Shakira and Lady Gaga. We've got a picture of these four lovely looking ladies. I shan't tell you the name of the band. Um, three national celebrities and a singer model have teamed up for an international music project. Right. They've given us some ideas about empowerment, which is pretty much every girl's direction. Right, well, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We'll probably take a baseline that we've already got from something else. We'll take these for the main building bricks and we'll do our best with the singer that we've got in later, build up some BVs around that and sprinkle some magic dust from some other tracks that I've got on the lappy. We've probably, uh, in fact, I know I've got a couple of ideas already. Management, record labels, like it simple so they've got something to suggest or to take to their producer. It might not be necessarily that you produce this, but if you do the pre-prod, get it ready for them so they can have their say. They like their say. Let them have it. You're about making your money off this track, not about worrying about the big, big picture. If you get the production deal as well, all the better, but let's just get the song to them. Remember, we've uh, picked up a load of uh, files. We've got our WAVs down. We're not using Reason Remember. We're pulling actual WAVs, loops and hits, straight off the disc, straight in. I've set up some uh, 808s and now we're going to look at showing you how to get a 120 beat um, loop down to 104 which is our target. It's dead easy, we're going to just show you how to do it, what we AB and how we make it work and fit into the track. Uh, start with, let's uh, go into file and import audio, nice and easy. Import, you've got session data, audio, media, video, head into the audio section and then we've got to look for what we're looking at. Now this is great because this has come straight up because I've already looked at it. It's uh, into our sample library. I've already set up this library when I've dragged things off into the machine and uh, the one we're going to look for, we've got a couple that work. They're both at about 120. We've got Hyperbreak 120 and Hyperbreak 120A as well. We have a listen to that. I'm not quite sure which one's which. Quite like that one. That's good. I'm feeling the love for that. What else have we got? I think, I think of the two, the, uh, the second is the, is the better. I think we're going to try and pull that one in. So we've got it over there on the left hand side. We can convert it over here and then that's pretty much all we need to do. Uh, don't worry about the rest of it, it's coming in at 44.1. You don't really have to think a great deal. That'll bring it in. It'll ask you to choose a destination folder. It should be ready set up for your auto files. Last for a new track, okay that as well. That's fine. And now we've got our track down here which I'm going to pull up by uh, my track because I'm going to pull it in as a chorus loop, I think, uh, and pull that over here. Now, let's see what we've got. We've got a starting point here. Now, this looks like it needs to be half, 50%. So we go up into our, um, well, it's our drag and drop, but we need TCE. So we've got standard TCE scrub and loop. We want TCE time compression expansion. Pop that in and we're going to expand. Shouldn't be too difficult. All it's a question of doing is pulling it out to that point. That's like 50% of that loop. It's pretty obvious. It's, it's almost idiot proof. You say that now and it's all going to go horribly wrong, but this should work. I mean reasonably idiot proof. Now I'm trying to match it up against this sync applier, so I'm going to copy 
what I've got down there, which is uh, my compressor. Just going to pull that one in. That should be the bomb factory over there, which is should be Alt. I was working on Pro Tools on um, on a PC yesterday, and I've uh, I've got my quick keys all mixed up, but still. That shouldn't be too difficult. So we've got the same there. I'm going to match the uh, volume, even though it's uh, looking like it's slightly, it's a bigger waveform. So maybe I'll start by matching the volume and bring it down. That's 3.4. I'm thinking that's probably still going to be a bit loud. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that, that works. Very, very simple way to bring audio in. All you've got to do is know, I mean, trial and error, okay, you can start that way, but you can see it. Use your ears, if it's wrong, it'll tell you. But pulling it out, when, you, when you've got that sort of 20 BPM, pulling it out to the obvious place. If your loop, you know, that, that's double size of your loop that you're bringing in, and you can see where it stops just by your lines, bring it in, click it to the grid, and you'll, you'll be there. It's, I mean, that's 104. It's, it's idiot proof. Anyway, it's a nice easy way of doing that. We've got our other hits there. It's about putting it together and now just getting the right mix so that we've got the basis for our track. Okay, what we're gonna look at is a, a bass line. I pulled in a bass line last night using Reason. A lot of you got Reason and uh, it's a nice easy way to uh, bring sounds in. I found a, a nice saw kind of bass and a, a lovely sort of bottom end filler. I'm gonna double them up, basically saying it's playing the same parts and uh, just have a fat, fat sorry bass with a good bottom end, so it fills out our bass range perfectly. We're covering like the low, low mid and high mids in there really, really well. Start with we're going to look at the subsonics. We'll, we'll play it against the um, 808 that we've got in there and some of the other beat, and uh, we'll look at that. We'll start at verse one. It sounds good. We've not done a great deal to it. We've put some maxim on it, and I'll bring that up here so you can have a look. Uh, we're using it just to boost the signal, really. It's, uh, it's, it can get lost unless you boost it. You don't want to go too, too loud. Keep it nice and musical so we can use it in the mix. Now, we'll go straight into here. We've got a... Now this is our saw bass. A bit more to do here. We put some compression. We put the old Bomb Factory compressor on there. We've also got the sounds amp, which to be honest, you can see what we're doing there. This is... You can hear the difference. This is why I like to have things in audio. You can play with them a lot more. And finally, I've just pulled out a little bit of the um, low mid. And overall, well, we can do a compare as well. I like that. That's cutting through. We've got an overall good sound for our bass now. It's not overly complex, but this song isn't. We're going to build most of it if we've got a good basis with the bass and drums and it's nice and tight, then we can work on our vocals really, really being the embellishments that we want. The reason you've been given references is because the management or label want to hear something similar. Google the producers, find out their favourite bits of kit, and if you haven't got access to the kit, try and find ways of replicating that sound. Wherever possible, use audio instead of MIDI to build up your kits. It's the most hands-on and intuitive way of dealing with each sound separately. Sure, it may not be as flexible when it comes to hard programming, but you can chop up and affect your separate kit sound in the edit and treat them as separate sounds. Every DAW has its own way of compressing or stretching. In a quick turnaround project, it's invaluable. In Pro Tools, the TCE option, or Time Compression and Expansion, is a fast and efficient way of stretching out or compressing your loops. Simply import your loop into your project as audio, select TCE, and stretch and snap your waveform to the grid. One loop, ready to go. Sticking an 808 underneath a loop or punchier kick drum gives it some real depth. Try a sub bass underneath your percussive or crunchier bass sounds, as this will give you a fuller sound. Use this tastefully though, you don't have to fill the song with it, and you can always fill out your bottom end at the mastering stage. Join us next time for another Frontline Producer series, where we hope to get the best out of a big rig like this, or your home studio, with a couple of tricks from myself or someone else. Thanks a lot, bye bye.